Hi, and welcome to a new episode of the Good Old Podcast. I'm Jackie Franchuli for Wahoo's 24-7. And as you can see, we have a double box today, which means we have a special guest. And you already know who it is. It is quarterback Tony Musket, the newest Virginia quarterback. Tony, thanks so much for joining us today. Yeah, thank you so much for having me on. I'm excited to uh, answer all these questions and just talk some talk some UVA football. Yeah, how how has it been? You've been to on grounds for right about a month now, or just a little, a little bit over it. How has everything been in Charlottesville? I mean, it's been great. Um, Charlottesville is one of I think the best college towns in the country, and so uh, you know, coming here and I feel like I'm living in a really good spot, and so I'm right close to the facility, right downtown by, by the barracks. Downtown's like a five minute drive away, so I'm close to everything. Uh, it's just cool meeting new people, meeting people in the community. Um, Everyone's just super nice, super welcoming, and so I'm I'm glad I made the decision. And yeah, it's going it's going real well so far. So you live right by all the the good eatery too. You live by uh, Chipotle, oh, Chick Fil A. Yeah. Yep. All that. <laughs> um, one of the one of the former one of the former basketball players loved Chipotle, so uh, it's always he liked right. always going there. Do you have a favorite restaurant, Eric's already? Yeah, Ch- Chipotle. I'm there. I'm there probably three times a week at least. <laughs> well, at least it's got good protein, right? It's good for winter workouts. Yeah. It's a good good bank for your buck too. You can get a whole bowl for 10, 12 bucks. There you go. That's right. And actually, that kind of leads me to winter workouts. How has winter workouts been? Because in Virginia, the quarterback room has its own designated strength and conditioning staff member that deals with quarterbacks. How has that adjustment been? And have you learned something from your the short term period of time here? Oh yeah. I mean, Coach McDuffie, I think he's one of the best. Uh, quarterback slash specialist trainers in the country. I mean, the stuff that he has me doing in there, he has the rest of the quarterbacks doing, it's it's next level stuff uh, in terms of just mobility, like strength in all uh, different points of your range of motion, being able to be fluid in all your movements. Um, it's been great. Uh, along with that, and Coach Smo running the conditioning as long as everybody else is lifting. I've gotten a lot stronger, a lot faster, I think, and then I'm throwing the ball real well, uh, thanks to all the coaches and um, all the staff that's putting in the work to get me better. So, yeah, it's going really well. Um, my favorite part, too, is, like, getting back in with the guys and just um, meeting new people, getting out to, like, work out with them, like, see their work ethic and all that. And so uh, it's been awesome. Yeah, I love it. Has anyone surprised you when you see them lift? Yeah, I'll tell you what. There's some – a lot of the guys we got from Georgia, the down there, Louisiana, those, those are some strong dudes. So I used – my old school was up in New Jersey, and we had some strong guys there. But <laughs> I'll tell you what, that – guys from the south, they got a different type of strength. I'm seeing guys squat – you know, four or five plates make it look light. It's just, it's, it's, it's a different type of strength, but yeah, it's been, it's been cool to see. Give us some names. Who, who, who have you been most shocked about? <laughs> <laughs> um, I'll, just, I'll start. Cause so I only work out with this, the skill. Uh, so offensive receivers, quarterbacks, running backs, and then defensive backs. And so uh, our running back room, we got, we got a lot of guys in there that can play a lot of big, strong guys that can run. And so I was over there, I think a couple of days ago, I was watching, uh, Kobe Pace, the Clemson transfer, Paris Jones, uh, X, Xavier, he was uh, under that squat squat rack too, and they were just moving. It was like three, four plates, and it was like a four-second tempo you had to go down at, so it's even harder than normal squat, and they were just making it look easy. I think Kobe threw on – Kobe and Paris threw on like 460 or 480 or something, and it was – yeah, they were moving the weight, so it was impressive to watch. It was uh, – it's good to know if you've got some strong backs next to you in pass pro, you'll be good. So uh, it was encouraging to see, yeah. So it seems like your transition to UVA has gone smoothly and you, you've you gone close to the guys too and they're in the workouts. When you first mm-hmm. committed, I remember you said the reason why UVA stood out was because of your relationship with the coaching staff. You like Taylor Lamb and you like the coaching staff. That's always been so important to you. Now that you're at UVA, does, did, they have, did they exceed the expectations? What stands out now, now about your decision and what was something that you said – okay, I'm surprised at this point of, of this at UVA. Yeah, um, I think they've definitely exceeded my expectations. You know, coming out of the portal, going through that recruitment process, that recruitment process um, one of the biggest things I try to look for is what type of people the coaches are because obviously I know there's a lot of great football minds out there, and I know that Coach Elliott, um, Coach Kitchens, and Coach Lamb, they all have a ton of football experience. I know they know the game. They know, like, the ins and outs of offensive schemes, all that stuff. 
Um, but like I said, what really stood out was um, like their character. You know what I'm saying it's been even I've been blown away since I've been here. Just how outgoing they are. If you ever need something, I feel completely comfortable uh, texting or calling up Coach Lamb, saying, "Hey, Coach, like this is going on." Um, they make it so it's it's more than just a football team. It's like really a football family. And so that's what I thought coming um, in here in my recruiting process. And then, you know, it's kind of been – it's been the same since I got here, if not better. So I'm glad I'm happy with uh, the coaches. I think they're great. They just, uh, the more and more our, keep, our players keep buying in, I think you're going to keep on seeing growth and uh, continued progress. So, yeah. Uh, on your former team, Monmouth, you actually had a former Cavalier, too, on that roster. I'm not sure. Did you talk to Hugo Abasi? Uh, about UVA and his experience before kind of deciding that UVA was going to be a serious com contender? Yeah, I talked to – so Hugo, he was uh, two lockers down for me in the old Monmouth locker room. So uh, I grew real close with him last season. And then, you know, when I was going throughout the recruitment process, um, I did ask him. And unfortunately for a good amount of his time here, he was injured. So um, he didn't get necessarily a chance to play as much as he would have liked. But in terms of just, you know, the people that were here, he said it's some of the best people you'll meet in your life uh, – the players, they love football. They love being around, being in the weight room, being on the field. So um, it's, it's a good culture. I think uh, that gets misconstrued sometimes, but it really is a good culture. I think there's a ton of guys that love football, that love the hard work. And then uh, as you see us keep on putting in more and more, keep on buying in and becoming a closer uh, tight-knit unit, you're going to see results. So, yeah. How has your chemistry been with those skill guys say you work out with them and we've seen the video of Delaney Crawford and Demi Starling kind of having a, a race to see who was the quickest out there. How's your relationship been with them? No, it's been awesome. Uh, one of the things coach Elliot wanted to preach was, you know, really forming relationships outside of football. Like I talked about that. I feel like that's even more important than how you communicate on the field, because if you know each other off the field, you hang out all the time, of course you're going to play better together. So, uh, you know, coming in, I was a new guy. We had a couple new transfers, but, um, especially the skill groups since I've worked out with them, they've been nothing but welcoming. Um, it's been awesome. You know, we get some extra work on the weekends whenever we can. And uh, the guys are just great. You know, they're ready to work. They have a great mindset. They're friendly. Uh, you can tell that, like, they care about everyone that's in the program. And so it's been great to see. And, you know, it motivates me, too, being around people like that, that just uh, they want to, like, welcome you in, help you get better, and then also, like, care for you at the same time. Um, yeah, it's good to be around. I enjoy it. So we're about a month away from the first practice uh, for spring. March 15th is the first day for you guys. What are you looking forward to the most when spring practice starts? Really, really just getting back out on the field. Um, you know, it's been a couple months now since the end of last season, especially for these guys, too. So, uh, you know, I think just getting back out there in pads, you know, kind of returning to a little bit of normalcy because um, we're all football players. We love being out on that grass and turf and just – you know, playing football. So I think especially with a new group of guys, I can't wait. We've been working out together. I'm getting to know them, but really getting out there and, and getting out there in pads, you know, throwing, running, catching, doing all that stuff. Um, just the basics, fundamentals. I think that's going to be awesome to get back to with these guys. I know it's always cliche in sports. You take it one game at a time, but the new schedule was released and you, you know now what kind of look forward to in this upcoming season. But that first game you play – in Tennessee, and I guess a quote-unquote neutral site, although you play Tennessee in Tennessee. Um, yeah. How do you what do you look forward to the most of being in Nashville and playing Tennessee in that opening game? Oh, I can't wait. Um, one of the main reasons I decided to transfer was because I felt like I could play the top level of college football, and, you know, it doesn't get much higher than playing Tennessee in Tennessee. So uh, it's just – it is a challenge, but more so I think it's an opportunity because that's the biggest stage of football we're going to be going into. And uh, I think we have a lot of guys that can perform at that stage on that level and, you know, perform at a high level. So I personally, um, you know, I love I love winter workouts. I love spring ball. I love summer. But I can't wait for that first game to come around because uh, we got it all circled on our calendar. And that's 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 what we're working for right now. And I know that's going to be on the road, but. You're from the state of Virginia. You have family in the state of Virginia. That was one of the things that you spoke about when you committed. How many people have already reached out for you for tickets for that opening game <laughs> against James Madison? <laughs> yeah, so uh, my dad, he has, honestly, I, I should know this, but I'm not completely sure. He's got, I think, eight or nine siblings, and he's got a ton of brothers. And so they've all got 
you know, most of them got kids of their own. And so uh, I think they're all going to try to make it to at least one home game. But I know that JMU game, too, because that's another Virginia school. My my sister went there. They all know people that go there. So um, it's probably going to be a lot. But I don't know if I'm going to be able to get all of them tickets. But when you add that with all my friends from, uh, you know, high school that go to JMU and go here, um, I think it's going to be a lot. I'm going to try to get them all tickets, but, you know, no promises. But it's definitely just going to be – Awesome to play in front of an environment like that. Um, you know, people you grew up with, people you know well, getting to see you play on, you know, one of the biggest stages of college football. So I'm definitely excited for it, the home opener. Um, but like I said, we're we're focused on week one right now, going in there to Tennessee. And then after that, I'll deal with all the rest of that stuff. So are you saying is we're expecting people wearing Tony Musket T-shirts for your face plastered on there with those big <laughs> sides with your face on it? Is, is that what you're saying? <laughs> Probably my family members probably they're big fans, but you know it's, it's nothing but it's nothing but great love to have and support uh, motivates me every day. So yeah, nothing but great. It must be nice having them now an easy drivable distance now compared to before. They're going to be able to watch your home games more frequently. Oh yeah, I know that um, a lot of them wanted to come up to New Jersey and watch me play, but that's about a four and a half five hour drive. Um, you know, my aunts and uncles are getting older, too, all my family members. So um, definitely being what, an hour and a half away from home now. Um, yeah, they're going to want to come see some, definitely. Um, so uh, like I kind of teased to you before the before we started recording, I did ask our subscribers if they wanted to ask you some questions. Uh, most of them are football, which, again, is a little shocking. I thought they were going to ask you if you liked uh, pe which type of pizza you liked or something like that. But they <laughs> actually just wanted to some football questions. So um, one of the things that they ask is if you had to choose a breakout skill player on the offense, who would you say just from your first month at UVA? Um, well, I don't know if this is breakout because you saw a flash last year, but uh, Malachi, number eight, our outside guy, he's uh, he's something to witness. I'll tell you that. he uh, He's one of those dudes when I could have said it earlier when he's working out and you see the way he's moving. You're, it's impressive. Um, along with that, he's six four, six five. Can run, can catch. Has everything in his bag. And so I think I know last year against Pitt, I think he had a real good game before his uh, injury. So uh, I would say, yeah, I think Malachi's gonna have a huge year this year. He's a, my opinion, he's a day one draft night kind of guy. So I think expect to see him in a big role this year. And another question they, they asked, um, we'll pick a couple here, is what are some of the thing, the parallels from the offense that you ran in Monmouth and the offense that you're kind of learning here with uh, Tony Ellie and Des Kitchings? What can you take it away from what you've already kind of uh, taken from the playbook and just how do you feel like it helps you in your transition? Yeah, I mean, honestly, it's uh, <coughs> it's it's very similar because we had the same mentality as quarterbacks up at Monmouth, it was we're not so much, you know, the star of the show. I know everyone thinks the quarterback is you make all the plays, your name's everywhere, like it's all on the quarterback. But the mentality I've always kind of had and I was taught both here and before is that you're more of like a point guard in basketball. So it's not your job to go out there and do everything yourself. You have five guys in your tight end blocking for you. You have three receivers or four receivers catching for you. Running back wants to run for you, block for you. So your job is just to get the ball into space, let your playmakers make plays for you. So um, when you put it in that lens, it's very similar. It's a lot of stuff. Get the ball out quick, um, establish the run game. We'll have a play action shots. You know, all that stuff is going to be in. And then it's just my job to just execute. Like I say, a quarterback is really just your offensive coordinator. If he could like play the game, how would he want to play it? You know, obviously I have my own touch to it, my own little spin on how I see things, but um, basically just getting the ball in space to my guys, let them make plays, let them go be the stars. So, yeah. All right. And here's a, here's a fun one for you. If you could be any type of animal, what would you be? If I could be any type of animal, I would say so it's got to be something in the water, probably a bigger sea creature. I would say like a, a whale, maybe a beluga whale, just because um, I've ne never necessarily loved the beach or being in the water. But I feel like when you get real out into the deep sea, if I could swim and do all that, I feel like it'd be very relaxing out there, you know, obviously. If you're a smaller sea creature, you be have to be afraid again, you know, eating or all that stuff. But if you're a whale, you know, you really don't have a ton of worries. You can just kind of float out there and just mind your own business. 
Okay. All right. That, that, I did not peg you as a beluga whale as this answer for you. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, and we kind of just end with this. Um, what is something that you want UVA fans to know about you? You know, you're obviously, you came in January. You're going to be a new face for them to follow um, mm -hmm. this next year. So what do you want UVA fans to know? Um, probably that I have a lot of pride, you know, coming back to UVA. Um, like I said, I grew up in Northern Virginia. Um, two of my siblings went to Virginia Tech. I know my sister went to JMU. I had a brother go to George Mason. So we've got every uh, Virginia college. And then I'm the first UVA. So <laughs> within my family and, you know, just being from the state of Virginia, it's, it's the state school. It's the University of Virginia. You know, every other sports program, I think right now it seems like we're ranked top 25 in the country. So um, when you talk about UVA football being a top 25 football program, then I think UVA has a legit argument to be, as a whole athletics organization, the best in the country all around. And so I have a ton of pride. You know, I went to New Jersey for a couple of years and it just made me miss home even more. Um, I have a ton of pride in that V-Saber and what it stands for. Um, I'm gonna do my best to, you know, live up to that expectation and live up to that standard. Um, I think we're doing pretty well so far. So keep on being me, put my own spin on things, but uh, make UVA proud. That's what I want to do. You still talking to your siblings that went to Virginia Tech? <laughs> no, not, not until after that. Not until after the season. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. I'm one of four. I get it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, and my, my final thing is, uh, how can UVA fans find you on social media? So, uh, I'm on Instagram and Twitter. I'm not on TikTok. I know I apologize, but, uh, my Instagram is at Tony Musket 11 and then on Twitter, it's just at Tony Musket. All right. Well, Tony, I really appreciate you joining us for, for the show. So, and, uh, we're excited to see you out there on March 15th. Yes, ma'am. Thank you very much for having me. And that was Tony Musket, a Virginia quarterback transfer who will start his first spring ball on March 15th for the Cavaliers. It's always nice to have players on the show. We get a little glimpse behind the scenes of how everything's going before that first practice in March. So if you like what you're hearing and what we're bringing on these podcasts, why don't you go ahead and subscribe to wherever you listen to them. We're available on Apple, Spotify, basically in most places, most platforms. And if you can, why don't you go ahead on Apple and Spotify and review us and rate us. So help us with the algorithm and get this podcast distributed more. But also, if you're listening or watching us on YouTube, why don't you go ahead and subscribe to this channel. Click on the bell so you're notified whenever there's a video posted. But also like this video. Again, it helps us in the algorithm, which means we grow the YouTube channel, which means we can create more content. So thanks again for listening and watching the show. That was Tony Musket. I'm Jack Frenchley for Wahoo's 24-7, and I hope you guys have a great week.